Anime and movies take a lot of years to create. An average Pixar movie can take four to seven years to complete production, and half of that time span is just focused on the idea of the movie. And you know dang well these scripts are a pain sometimes. I've tried to write a 10 minute cartoon before, it took me an entire month and then I realized it was bad. So think about an hour and a half feature film. If a company feels the story just doesn't go anywhere, it gets thrown away and is never seen again. And sometimes it has to do with creative differences and sometimes funding issues. But that being said, today I'm going to be explaining a ton of scrapped animated movies. What was the plot? Why did it fail? Let's go! Now some of these movies could be picked back up again after I'm recording, and we've got an example of this with recently with the movie Nimona, based off of a popular graphic novel about a shapeshifter named Nimona who becomes a sidekick for a villain named Lord Ballister who determines to overthrow the law. Kind of a basic plot in my opinion, but I really like that the story kind of has a villain as a main character, which we don't see often in animated movies. Megamind did this and it was such a good movie. This movie was actually in works with Blue Sky known for, you know, Ice Age, uh, Horton Hears a Who, the best movie ever, Rio. And this movie was doing good until Disney decided, yep, we don't care for Blue Sky. Blue Sky is not making us money, so instead of helping it, we threw out their stuff. Bye Blue Sky, we're gonna make a bad Disney Plus special about you. And so this movie was kind of at a loss, but the animators liked the story so much they continued to pitch it to other studios. And we recently got feedback that this movie was actually put back into production with Netflix. This might actually be a really good decision considering Netflix has been kinda on a roll with animated movies. It's still really sad this won't be a Blue Sky movie and Blue Sky put out such a sad statement. No, no, oh, this makes me so sad. Okay, I'm getting emotional, let's move on. Next up, we got canceled Pixar movies, which from my research, this doesn't happen often. Every Pixar movie that Pixar has worked on has came out. Even if they had some bumps in the road, they, they continued through. Except there is one movie. The most well-known scrapped Pixar movie is none other than Newt. He is literally adorable. Think about how many t-shirts this guy could have been on. Think about how many coffee cups Facebook moms would have of this fella. Newt was gonna be a romance movie directed by Gary Reinstrom. The plot was the question, what happens when the last remaining male and female newts on the planet are forced together by science to save their species? And there's a huge Pixar plot twist, bigger than every other Pixar movie. They can't stand each other. That, that, that's the that's the plot twist. That's actually kind of interesting. It would have opened a lot of good gags. Maybe an enemies to lovers plot? Apparently the movie's idea just wasn't going anywhere, and when they gave the idea to Pete Doctor, he said, okay, but I have a whole new idea instead. And then we got the 2015 hit, Inside Out. This is just proof everything happens for a reason. Awesome, mate. isn't this movie kinda like Rhea? It was later confirmed by Pixar that this movie was also scrapped because of Rio, a movie that has the exact same plot. I can take mini ganders to why Newt didn't work out. I still think it could have been cool if they just like changed the plot and kept the characters, but I can just watch Rio. Uh, there's actually a big canceled Pixar sequel, but it wasn't going to be made by Pixar. A huge sequel that Pixar ended up leaving in the dust was Monsters Inc. 2 Lost in Scaradise. Pixar had originally planned to have a whole other studio produce their sequels. This company was called Circle 7 Animation, also known as Pixar. Which I'm glad this didn't happen, because I feel like that would have been the whole Disney DVD sequels all over again. And nobody wants that. Monsters Inc. 2 was all about Mike and Sully going to the human world to deliver a present to Boo. That could have actually been cool. I've always wondered what Boo thought of these monsters when she grew up. Eventually, Mike and Sully would be trapped in the human world, and they would part ways after disagreeing on what to do. You know, classic Sully and Mike. Now, if it wasn't for the idea that this movie would be produced by a whole nother studio, that kind of sounds pretty interesting. But Monsters University is a masterpiece, though. Uh... Now, this segment is about a canceled Lego movie. And a lot of other Lego films also got canceled for a reason I'm gonna get into. So basically, we lost a lot. The Lego movie was the most unexpected hit in 2014. Everybody assumed it was just going to be a big cash grab for Lego, but it ended up winning a ton of awards and is literally mine and many others' all-time favorite movie. There was just nothing like it at the time, and when Warner Brothers realized this, their eyes lit up. In that moment, they became Mr. Krabs. The rest is over there. Jumping King Neptune! 
and a few years later they dropped the Lego Batman movie which also became a hit. It's almost better than, than the Lego movie. So it was safe to say that Lego movies were off to a damn good start. But then I guess they got too carried away with the big success that as soon as they came out with the third one, they set themselves up for a disaster. Everybody got their taste of pure Lego cinema, they didn't care for more. And because of the flop that were both of these movies, Warner Brothers decided to part ways with Lego. And that meant that all the Lego movies that were in production were done for. But Universal ended up getting the rights, so that's pretty cool. A new Lego movie that was in production with Warner Brothers was called The Billion Brick Race, which was set to be released in 2019. This movie was gonna be a racing movie, which was gonna have a ton of references to a ton of 80s and 90s cop and action films. And the character designs looked really promising. We got Brody Rays, who looked to be a chill dude. He might be a Chad. I'm guessing that he was the main character. Uh, I'm not sure. We got Jane. From the looks of it, she does not take any crap. And my personal favorite design, TOUGH GUY! It was gonna be directed by Drew Pierce and Jason Siegel, but they ended up leaving to pursue other opportunities, and it was reported that this movie was now in the hands of George Gutierrez. He's most well known for directing The Book of Life. What?! This guy is a legend! But I guess he also ended up leaving the production, so... I don't know what went wrong with this movie. <laughs> Uh, so I think it's safe to say that this movie will probably not see the light of day, and that makes me really sad. Okay, time for DreamWorks cancelled movies. I'm really excited for this because I love DreamWorks. DreamWorks has had so many movie ideas associated with them. DreamWorks actually pitched a movie to a game artist, and that was none other than Rich Werner. He was the artist of Plants vs. Zombies, but he announced that nothing really came of his pitch. But the concept art looks so good! As of more recently, it looks like DreamWorks is taking on more based on books genre instead of, you know, doing a movie on a game. Which I think has worked better for them. I still think a Plants vs. Zombies movie could have really worked. Now let's get into original projects that DreamWorks has scrapped. This was my favorite segment to research because, oh my gosh, every DreamWorks scrapped movie was so genius. How do you guys go along with your day knowing that you left these ideas in the dust, but finished Boss Baby and Boss Baby 2? I just don't get it! Starting off, the most well-known Scrap DreamWorks movie we got is Me and My Shadow. This one has got to be the most devastating one. Everybody knows about this movie concept. A lot of us, including myself, found out about this scrapped movie because of Daz Reviews, who did a whole in-depth video about it. He's great, go watch that video. But in short, Me and My Shadow was about a secret world of shadows and their human counterparts. I, I read this on Google, guys. Give me a break. Daniel Grubb, the main human, was with Shadow Dan, who longed for an exciting life. But human Daniel was too busy with school. But when a crime happens in the shadow world, it puts both of them in danger and Shadow Dan takes full bodily control of human Daniel. It gets confusing, I know. And then they go on a journey to stop a evil shadow villain. We were also gonna get a side story where the nerd meets a quirky girl. This movie was apparently halfway done before it got scrapped. They had a soundtrack list, they had a, they had Bill Hader and Josh Gad on board to voice. Hey, a bank robbery! Come on, let's go! Come on, don't you want to be a hero? Well, I don't know where you're from, but here in America, we tried to get on the TV. So it was really disappointing when nothing more was released. There was no movie. Just a poster and all this other stuff. Since then, it feels like every year we've gotten new snippets of what this movie could have been. <laughs> the next DreamWorks movie canceled is the musical movie Larrikins. Larrikins, I don't know how to say it. Here is the plot. Perry, an uptight Bilby, gets kicked out of his sheltered life of his family Barrow. After being surrounded by dingoes, he finds himself on a musical adventure across the mystical Australian outback. He is told the secret location of a royal egg and is, and is told to not tell anyone but the pelicans. On the way to the pelicans, he also befriends a kangaroo named Red and a cane toad named Andrew. Together, they must save the empire from a villainous white-bellied sea eagle named Hotspur. And that's all I read. <laughs> Apparently, the cast was going to consist of Hugh Jackman, Margot Robbie, Dee Bradley Baker. After four years of the directors working hard on this movie, new studio executives decided the movie wasn't creatively working out. Which, like, really confuses me, because if, if they were working on this movie for four years, something must have been good enough to finish. Like, I'd get it if it was cancelled a year into production, but four years? So the real reason it was cancelled is kind of left a mystery. I'm guessing there was some sort of a creative disagreement. DreamWorks just ended up using some of the assets for their short film Bilby. And that's it for DreamWorks movies. All these ideas were phenomenal, and I am sad. Okay, this segment, I'm really excited. 
Cancelled Sony Films, Sony Picture Animations. Do you, you guys know them, right? Now, Sony Pictures has also scrapped a few movies that seemed pretty cool as well. Sony Animation is definitely a company that either makes a really good movie or the worst movie you've ever seen. They give us a ton of trash, boring movies, and then occasionally they're like, fine, we'll, we'll release something decent. One of the animated movies that was in talks to make with Sony was a 3D digitally animated Popeye movie. It was reported in 2010 that the director of Hotel Transylvania was also going to direct this movie. And I think they got pretty far in production because we were already getting fully rendered animation tests. And these snippets looked really promising for apparently just being a test. The voice of Popeye in this animation test was Tom Kenny. How peculiar! But the film was going in a direction the director, Gendy, didn't really want, and he just ended up leaving the project. We got this amazing snippet for the Popeye movie, and then a few years later, they just dropped the Emoji movie instead. Uh, we've actually gotten some good news recently that this movie is gonna be made, just not with Sony. It's actually gonna be a movie made by Warner Bros. and apparently DreamWorks. So yes, there won't be a Sony Popeye movie, but we will still get a Popeye movie. Hotel Transylvania director, Gendy, moved on to a new Sony project, which was titled Can You Imagine, which was also scrapped, so I guess nothing was working for Sony in this time frame. Can you imagine was gonna be a journey through a boy's imagination? I like it, it seems nostalgic. There was not a lot of details more than that, but we got a ton of concept art, and at the bottom of this concept art was the words, this movie was never made. Okay, one more Sony cancelled movie. This one is called Kazorn and the Unicorn. Now this one has little to no information except for some really colorful concept art. Shout out to this dude for like sending me all this. The movie was going to be about this brave man and a unicorn who seek to find a powerful weapon to prove his worth to his true love. Don't say it. Don't say it. Zip! Okay, now it's time for Disney cancelled movies. I mean, it's Disney. I could do an hour video about their cancelled movies. They scrapped a plane sequel, a Seven Dwarves spinoffs, Meet the Robinsons 2, Treasure Planet 2, Jungle Book 3. How many sequels does Disney need to work on? A newer Disney cancelled project was called Gigantic, and I am so sad about this one. I remember when they had a whole D23 announcement, they showed off a ton of concept art. They were so confident in this movie working out, they even did a Zootopia easter egg with all these Disney covers and animal fied including Gigantic. So I was kind of excited for this movie. The plot of this movie would continue Disney's streak of fairy tale movies. This movie would be a take on the classic fairy tale Jack and the Beanstalk. Jack climbed the beanstalk until he eventually found big giants above the clouds, including a giant girl who treats him like a pet. The movie would be a musical themed movie with the Frozen songwriters creating the soundtrack for this movie. With new projects being made and apparently new directors coming on board, this movie just kept getting postponed. Until eventually Disney was like, screw it, we're done with this movie. They didn't really give a proper reason. There were rumors that this movie was cancelled because the creators had trouble getting the movie's story slash problem to run for an entire length of a feature film. Which is definitely another reason why a lot of movies get scrapped. I mean, you can definitely have a simple story, but if it doesn't have enough material to keep it going and still be entertaining by the movie's end, then it's best to make it into like a short film or something. And the last Disney movie scrapped I have for you fine lads today is The Wildlife. Emphasis on wild. This movie is like Illumination Sing if Sing was raunchy and not for children. They have a sexy elephant in wildlife. Wait a minute. Did Sing copy Wildlife? It was gonna be a rivalry story in a club. Everybody's trying to be a star at Club Wildlife. The main moral of this movie would have been about dealing with fame, losing a sense of normalcy, all while complimenting pop culture. Yeah, okay, I, I think that's the end of this video. If you guys want me to do a part two and talk about a ton more canceled animated movies, uh, let me know. A huge movie I forgot to mention was the canceled SpongeBob movie. This movie was about Spongebob and Space Cats, but the movie was cancelled because it was apparently too dark for audiences. I I'm so confused, it's Spongebob. How dark could it be?